Today's video, how to make a time-lapse video from a whole bunch of photographs that maybe you've shot in your Sony ZV-1 or any camera for that matter, and it's really easy to do. Let's get into it. My name is Vic Barring for techniques, tips and thoughts on all things to do with making vids. Then hit subscribe, especially if you find this video useful. Today we're going to look at two slightly different methods that are going to have very, very different results. Number one is the cheap and cheerful way of making a time-lapse video from a bunch of photographs, and it just works. If this is what you want to do and just get it done, boom, this will work. The second method that we're going to do after the first method, that's normally what happens after this, yeah, okay, I can count. The second one that we're going to do is something that's not necessarily more advanced, but it can really, really make your time-lapse photos pop, and the whole thing will look a lot better. But let's get into the kind of the quick, cheap and cheerful way first. I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro for this, but you can use any editing software that you have for video. The majority of them, like Resolve and Final Cut, all have this option. So let's get into it. I'm in Adobe Premiere Pro here. I want to select Import. And now I've got a bunch of photographs that were taken on a Sony ZV-1. And basically we want to import this entire sequence. Now that's the magic word sequence, because if we look here, we have the words image sequence. So I'm gonna select the first one, make sure image sequence is ticked. And then this is gonna bring all of these in because the Sony ZV-1 has numbered these and every camera will number all the files. It's not just Sony cameras, all cameras will number the files sequentially. So. This is gonna look at all of these numbers, bring them in as an image sequence. I'm gonna select open. And now we have got just one clip brought in to, well, it's not really a clip, but we got one clip brought in to Adobe Premiere Pro. And what this is, if we drag it onto the timeline here, we can see that now Premiere has put all those photographs together. And if we play it back, boom, we've got our time lapse. It's awesome. So that's the real cheap and cheerful way. Get all those photographs in there as an image sequence, boom, and they're done. You can go fiddling with color correction here within Adobe Premiere Pro if you want. You can use Lumetri. Now, there's a couple of disadvantages to this with photographs, and I'll tell you why really quick. So we can get in here and we can, you know, adjust the white balance. We can make things a bit more contrasty. We can drop the highlights. We can do all those things, and I'm just destroying those photographs there. We can do all that, but these were JPEGs. Now, there's nothing wrong with shooting JPEGs, JPEGs, but if you have the opportunity to shoot raw, then you're going to get the full image, the full image that the sensor was able to take in, no compression, no JPEG compression put in there, and you're going to have the ability to kind of, you know, pull back some of the details and the highlights and retain the details in the shadows, which means you can make your photos really pop because you've got so much more detail to work with. Now, this is where we can really up the game here. And here's the thing, mirror this is really easy to do. You don't have to be like a photo editing master or anything of the sort to do this. Uh-uh, it's -uh. really easy to do. Let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you exactly what we can do. Lightroom's just crashed. <laughs> yeah, we just wait for that to fix itself. I'm not gonna do a full kind of color editing, photo editing course here. Ah, ah, ah. I'm just gonna blaze through this, but you will see in just a couple of moves and drags and clicks of a slider, you can really take this photograph to the next level. So, because these photographs were shot in RAW, we can pull back details from the dark parts and the bright parts. So what I generally do as a rule of thumb with Lightroom is I hit auto first. Now we can see we've got lots of details. By the way, this is St. Coleman's Cathedral and Cove for anybody that cares, just in case somebody did somewhere. Next step for me is if you want to put a kind of a cheap and cheerful orange and teal look on it really quick, red primary 20, green primary 20, blue primary minus 20. And we can see that we're now building up something really nice. And you see how quick that was? So the next step for me here, really quickly, is we can see there's a little bit of orange and yellow because the sun's going down. So I want to bring out that orange and yellow. And this is where we're going to make the photograph pop. In the saturation, which saturation is kind of how vibrant or saturated the color is, I'm going to bring the oranges up. I'm going to bring the yellows up. Maybe I'm going to push the reds a little bit more. So we can see that we're getting somewhere. Now let's drop the highlights a bit more because this is the brighter part of the image where the highlights live. And because it's raw, we can pull back some of those details. I'm gonna bring down the whites here as well, just a little bit. And then nearly there. And then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do because we've got a hundred of these photos. Don't stress out though. Gonna bring the clarity up. Never push the clarity more than like 20, 25 tops. Bring up the dehaze. And now we can see this is looking really good. I like this. The angle is not the best, but I like the colors that are here. 
So the shadows are kind of dropping again. So let's make this pop a bit more. Let's bring up the shadows. So here's the before, here's the after. Trust me, you guys, Lightroom or Lightroom Mobile, you can do all of this really easily. Just move stuff around. What? What's the worst that can happen? Nothing. Just start again. We're looking at this time lapse here and we've got all these photographs. In fact, we've got 100 photographs. Now you don't want to be there doing this for each and every single photograph. So what we need to do is copy those settings to all the other photographs. On the photograph that we've just edited, let's hit copy. You can select what you want to copy. In this case, I'm just going to copy everything except the crop because we didn't touch the crop. And then I'm going to select photograph number two, going to go to the end, press shift, and then I'm gonna right click in one of the photographs, develop settings, and then, come on, you guessed it. Put it in the comment, paste settings. Simple, see, how easy is this? I told you this was easy, right? So let's paste all of the photographs. You can see them changing there, have now changed. And we've got an edited looking time-lapse, which I think these photographs, these colors just look really good. Now there is one more step before you can bring this into Premiere or any other video editing software the way we've just done earlier on. And that is, you need to export them back out. I'm gonna press Ctrl and A to highlight everything. Gonna right click, gonna select export, gonna select where we want to export them. I'm just gonna create a new folder here called processed or processed, depending where you are, right? We've gotta get those THs and those PROs right. People always give me a hard time with the THs, but hey, it's an Irish thing. Hit export. And then we can see up the top left here, this is gonna chug along and export out all those photographs. Then what do you do? Well, get it into Premiere Pro. And I've got one more bonus trick here as well, guys. And this is really going to take your time-lapse, whether you've edited it in Lightroom or whatever, or just dumped it right into Premiere, this trick is going to take the time-lapse to a whole new video visual level. You do not want to miss this. And here's the thing. Again, mirror, 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 mirror. It's easy, it's really easy. Like anybody can do it. As before, we're going to import our time-lapse photographs to make a video and make sure again, you hit image sequence. So let's select open. And now let's drop these in here. And because of the sequence settings here, this is kind of zoomed in. And that's kind of what I'm getting at as well here for this super bonus trick, right? I'm gonna select effect controls here. I'm gonna bring it back to where it kind of fits the frame. We can move things around if we want. So let's say this is it. Let's press play. And we can see we have that incredible looking time-lapse with the sun going down in the corner. Now, how do we take this to the next level? Here's, <laughs> this is so easy, man. This is so easy. You will go, okay. So this is a really good trick to know. Keyframes, don't freak out. A couple of dots on the screen. That's all they are. And they're gonna be so powerful. So I'm gonna select the scale option here. And I'm gonna to go to the end of our time-lapse or wherever you want. And then I'm gonna select this little dot here. And I'm just gonna change the scale. So we're zooming in. Now, if you wanna take this to another level, you do the exact same with the position keyframes. So there's our original position. Maybe we want to go up here a little bit, or maybe not. But that's the power of keyframes. And if we go back here, we can see that the picture and the video now, as it were, is zooming in and it's moving. Just to make this just a little bit more pro, just to make this to really up your game. One more trick. Here it is. These two here, highlight the two keyframes, right click, temporal interpolation, select ease out. Now this is gonna make the start of the zooming and the scrolling just a little bit smoother. And then the same here at the end, right click in the two, ease in. Make sure you select them. Let's drag this out. And then if we press play, you can see it eases out and then eases in and slows right down. I've got a lot of comments about time lapses on the Sony ZV-1. Why doesn't the camera just spit out a video file? And what you've just seen here, is probably one of the best reasons that you're gonna to get to why it doesn't spit out a video file, because it will be a compressed video file. So you're working with photographs, just to sum up, shoot in raw. I know it's not for everybody, but here's the thing. If you don't start shooting stuff in raw, if you don't start doing what I've just showed you and you've seen how easy it is, then you're never going to get better. Sure, the first couple of vids you make, you want to get a time lapse in there, just do the JPEGs, dump them into Premiere, boom, it's done. But you want up the game, and that's what it's always about. I please always never stop learning. 
No matter what YouTube channel you're looking at, no matter what you're doing, never stop learning. So use this to really bring your stuff to the next level. I'll see you in the next video. And if there's a video he and no, the video's there. Yeah, there. Video's there. And he will absolutely love it all about the Sony ZV-1. Until the next video, as we always say, don't stop fighting for yourself. New angle. Anyway. Uh, oh, yeah.